Over the past few years, Vince and I had set foot in Tokyo over a dozen times. That alone should tell you just how much we adore the Japanese capital. We're not even sure why. The things that we normally hate in any other city are exactly the things we love about Tokyo. We dislike big urban capitals. Tokyo is a humongous urban capital. We abhor big crowds. Tokyo is overcrowded. We despise too many rules. Tokyo has many unwritten codes that locals and guests are expected to abide by. Yet, with each visit, we love it more and more even though it's confusing AF. Hey there, poor traveler! We are Vince and Josh. Tokyo is zen but wacky, chaotic but organized, minimalist but vibrant, traditional but futuristic, and efficient but absolutely insane. And it can easily drive first-time visitors crazy. But fret not, because in this video, we'll share with you some practical tips that could hopefully help you plan a hassle-free Tokyo adventure. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified when we upload new travel videos. We often think of Tokyo as a single city, but it's actually a lot more complicated than that. It's a metropolitan prefecture. A what, you ask? Mm, let me explain. It's not a single city, but not your usual Japanese prefecture either. Think of it as a cluster of cities, municipalities, and special wards. Together, it is the most populous metropolitan area in the world with over 37 million residents. But let's focus on one area in particular. What many refer to as Tokyo is actually what used to be Tokyo City, which is now broken down into 23 special wards, each operating as an individual city. There's a big chance that most of the attractions you want to see are confined within the collective boundaries of these 23 special wards. The good news is, if you're in Tokyo for only a short visit, you wouldn't even feel the division. They seem to function as one giant urban hub connected by the most impressive transportation system you will ever see. Here are a few more facts that you need to know. The official language is Japanese or Nihongo, and English isn't widely spoken. However, most signs have English translations. Currency is the yen, and the most common mode of payment is cash. Many establishments accept credit cards, but most still prefer cash, especially small shops and small restaurants. How to apply for a visa? Visas are always a major hurdle for many Filipino travelers. One look at the list of requirements and some already feel intimidated by it. I felt exactly the same when I was new in the travel scene. But over the past few years, the Japanese embassy has been more forgiving when it comes to granting visas. If you're holding a Philippine passport, you need a visa. We have several detailed step-by-step -step guides that will help you get through the application process whether you're applying as a tourist or as someone visiting friends or relatives. We also have a guide if you wish to get a multiple entry visa. You can find all these on our website www.thepoortraveler.net or follow the links in the description of this video. When is the best time to visit? Spring and Autumn. I may be biased here because I've lived in the tropics all my life so I always want to visit Japan when it's a bit cooler. Summer in Japan can get too hot even for an island guy like me. Spring is the best time to visit for two reasons. The weather is often pleasant and comfortable. And if your timing is right, I have two words for you. Cherry blossoms. In Tokyo, the first bloom usually happens in March week 3 to 4. Full bloom at the end of that month and the last fall within week 1 of April. Emphasis on usually. These days, you can never be too sure. Make sure you check Cherry Blossom's forecast before you book your flight. Fall or autumn is great too. Not too cold and I find the autumn colors to be a nice treat. Winter isn't a bad option either. Tokyo winter has its market but it has its pros and cons. Flights and hotels are cheaper. Most attractions are not as crowded and shopping districts go on New Year sale, offering amazing deals. But it can get super cold outside. So you need to prepare. 
Days are also shorter. If you love taking photos, it's something you need to consider. Daylight is gone as early as 4.30pm, and establishments close earlier too. Where is the best area to stay in Tokyo? Hmm, tough question. The truth is, as long as the hotel you choose is near a train station, you should be fine because most tourist spots are accessible by train or subway. But when it comes to convenience, some areas are far better than others in terms of accessibility and number of accommodations. Most online sources recommend three locations, Shinjuku, Shibuya, and the area surrounding Tokyo Station. I agree with these recommendations because they're all close to key attractions and have direct airport bus services. There are also numerous shops and restaurants around. If the overall vibe is important to you, Asakusa and Akihabara are neighborhoods to consider too. Akihabara is great for otaku and gadget-happy tourists. Asakusa, on the other hand, has an old Tokyo feel around it that you might appreciate. However, I prefer Ueno for a lot of personal reasons. First, Ueno is only 40 to 70 minutes away from the airport by train, and there is a direct line. It is important to me because I dislike switching trains and walking long distances in Tokyo when I have 30 kilos of baggage on my shoulders. Second, Ueno is also closer to Akihabara than most of the locations I mentioned. Akihabara is my absolute favorite place in Tokyo. And lastly, Ueno harbors a number of budget hotel chains. Wherever you choose to stay, here are some budget accommodation types and usual off-peak rates. Tokyo is one of the most visited cities in the world, so accessibility isn't really an issue. In fact, it is served by two airports, Narita and Haneda. If you're coming from overseas, there is a higher chance you'll be using the Narita Airport. Located 70 kilometers from the city center of Tokyo, Narita Airport is farther from the city than Haneda, but it has more transportation options. KSA Bus transfers passengers from Narita Airport to Tokyo Station. If your hotel is near Tokyo Station or any of its very few stops, good for you. If not, you might still need to take the train. Here are the bus rates. To book in advance, visit the KSA Boss website and click on the English tab in the upper right corner. On the next page, click on Tokyo Shuttle and follow the steps. If you're more comfortable booking with Kluk instead, they have bus services from Narita Airport Terminal 1 or 2 to Tokyo City Air Terminal or Tokyo Station. You can also travel by train. Only Narita Terminals 1 and 2 have their own train station. If you're landing at Terminal 3, you need to make your way on foot to Terminal 2 first. You just need to follow the signs, there are plenty of them around. The cheapest train option is the KC Mainline Limited Express. Depending on where your hotel is located, your route will change and you might need to make a few train switches. Assuming your hotel is in Ueno, this is how much this train will cost you if you wish to go to KC Ueno Station. Do not confuse this with KC Skyliner, for which seats are paid and reservations are mandatory. The great thing about the Skyliner though is that it can take you to the city in almost half the time but for double the price. If your hotel is in Shinjuku or Tokyo Station area, we have step-by-step -step instructions on our website too. You'll find the link in the description. To get around Tokyo, the train is the most efficient mode of transportation. Tokyo has an expansive railway system. Wherever it is you're going, there is most likely a train station very close to it. Tokyo by train can be a bit overwhelming at first, but it's easy once you get the hang of it. First, bear in mind that the network is used by almost a dozen operators, including those serving the suburbs. However, in this video, let's focus on the three companies that serve Central Tokyo. JR East, Toei Subway, and Tokyo Metro Subway. 
each of them operate multiple lines that get so entangled, it's amazing how the Japanese make it work. JR East controls the all-important JR Yamanote line. Expectedly, this line is used by a good fraction of the population. Which is me saying that the trains are often packed during rush hour. Aside from Yamanote, JR also runs other lines including Chuo Main, Chuo Sobu, and the Shinkansen or Bullet Train. The subway lines are operated by Tokyo Metro and Toei. Although separate companies, these two are in great synergy. Often, you don't need to exit the gates and buy new tickets even if you switch from Toei to Metro lines or vice versa. There are cases when you do though. Subway lines are marked with an assigned letter in a color-coded circle. For example, Shinjuku line's mark is an S in a leaf green circle. Mita line's mark is the letter I in a blue circle. Remember these marks and the company's logos because this is how you'll find them. You might be thinking, oh cool, that looks easy. It seems easy to understand now, but if you're a Tokyo newbie, it's a lot more difficult in practice. These lines are so entangled, as I mentioned earlier, and when they meet in major stations like Shinjuku or Tokyo Station, things get even more complicated. Even my sister, who had been living in Tokyo for years, sometimes get awfully lost. <coughs> Aside from the lines, you might also need to know the different train types. Local trains are those that stop at every single station of the line. Every single station. If your stop is 20 plus stations away, it can take a lot of time. Rapid trains are those that skip some stations. Same price as local trains and same platforms too, but it's a little bit faster. Express trains skip even more stations than rapid trains. And the limited express trains stop only at major stations. Additional fee is usually required. If it entails waiting only a few minutes on the platform, I would usually choose a rapid or express train even when the local train is already approaching. Warning though, board the non-local trains only if you're sure it will make a stop at your station. You don't want to skip your stop. True story. How to travel by train? First, you need to know how much you must pay for the trip. On your web browser, go to Hyperdia. It's a web-based search engine that will show you the fares and schedules of trains in Japan. There are also route maps at the station, usually above the ticket machines. It also displays the price based on distance. But sometimes the map is in Japanese characters only which is why Hyperdia is useful. Once you know how much you're gonna pay, approach the ticket machines. And follow the instructions which are also available in English. Feed your ticket to the ticket slots at the gate and pick it up on the other side. Then, go to the right platform and wait for the right train. If you get lost or you encounter any problem, don't hesitate to approach the staff at the window. Every station has one. Prepaid IC cards are also available. It seldom offers discounts but the beauty of it is that you don't need to get a ticket each time you're using the train. You just need to quickly hover the card over the reader and you're through. Suica and Pasmo are the two most popular cards in Tokyo. What's the difference? Well, the company's offering it mainly. Suica is sold by JR while Pasmo by Toei and Tokyo Metro. However, both cards work in any Tokyo Metro, Toei, or JR line. As far as the user experience is concerned, it's very very similar. These cards can also be used on buses. An increasing number of shops and other establishments are also accepting these cards as mode of payment. You can even use it to buy drinks or snacks from vending machines. Several transportation passes are available in Tokyo too. Whether or not they're worth it depends on your itinerary. But here's the thing. Many of Tokyo's tourist spots are very close to each other. For example, Meiji Shrine, Yoyogi Park, and Takeshita Dori are all in the Harajuku neighborhood. You can definitely walk to get from one side to another. If you plan your trip well, you might not have to take public transportation often. In cases like this, there's no need for a pass. But if you only have a very limited time in Tokyo and your itinerary is super packed, then go ahead. There are a lot of options but one of the most convenient is the Tokyo subway ticket. The Tokyo subway ticket grants you unlimited access to all subway lines including Toei and Tokyo Metro, but not JR lines. How about a nationwide JR pass? Would you need one? Well, again, that depends on your itinerary. 
if you will be staying in Tokyo the entire trip, a JR Pass isn't really worth it. It only makes sense to get a JR Pass if you're on a multi-city journey around Japan. If your itinerary involves taking long-distance trains often and you're staying for at least 7 days, you can save money by getting a JR Pass. For example, if you would be visiting Tokyo, Osaka, and Fukuoka in 7 days, it could be a great deal. Otherwise, consider other city or regional passes instead. It is impossible to talk about Tokyo without a mention of its food. It has more Michelin star restaurants than any other city in the world, although many of them are pricey and require reservations months in advance. Unless you're cooking, the easiest way to save money on food is to hit the supermarket. Japanese supermarkets sell not just raw ingredients but also cooked ones that you can simply heat or eat right away. If you wait until around 8pm, you might score a good deal. This is when discounts on perishable products like cooked meals are offered. Convenience stores serve good food too. But you probably won't go to Tokyo just to raid their supermarkets and convenience stores. Not that something's wrong with that if that's your thing. Even if you're running on limited fuel <clears throat> money, you can still eat out. We'll be mentioning some good foodie spots in our next video, so watch out for that. Okay, first of all, tipping is not common in Tokyo. To settle your bill, you are expected to approach the cashier on your way out, usually at least. The cashier is usually stationed by the entrance or exit. Speaking of money, Licensed shops can waive taxes for foreign tourists for purchases of at least 5,000 yen. All you need to do is find the tax-free counter and present your passport. Tokyo is bursting with attractions. There's no running out of things to do. Like I said, we have been to Tokyo many times and yet we haven't been to even half of our Tokyo bucket list. Our next videos will feature the best places to visit and things to do in the city. So if you don't want to miss it, subscribe to this channel now and hit the bell icon so you're notified when they're up. If you need more information about traveling around Japan, you'll find comprehensive travel guides with sample itineraries on our website www.thepoortraveler.net or check out the links in the description. If you have questions, make good use of the comment section below. You can also follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Just look for at the poor traveler single L. You may also tune in to the poor traveler podcast on Spotify. That's all for now. Remember, plan smart, travel safe, and make every trip worth it.